Do you follow Jesus? Do you follow Jesus? Let's pray. Father in heaven, this afternoon I pray for your Holy Spirit's presence. And I ask that as we pause for just a moment, you would pause our hearts and minds and spirit. Help us to listen to your voice. We ask for your Holy Spirit to open the lips of your servant, that you would speak to all of us, including your servant. Guide us, grow us, sanctify us as you justify us. In Jesus' name, amen. Turn with me, if you would, quickly to Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9. In Jesus' day, there were many people who wanted to follow Jesus. You can imagine why. You have studied with me many times, and, and we're pausing. I know we're in the series of the seven churches right now, but we're pausing because today we've had the opportunity to celebrate somebody who has made a decision to follow Jesus. And I think it's important when we see someone make that decision that we stop and ask ourselves, have we truly made the decision to follow Jesus? In fact, baptism is huge because when you understand what baptism means, the word baptism or to baptize, baptizo in the Greek means to immerse oneself. You follow me? You're immersing your yourself. It's the very reason when we baptize in water, we immerse the whole body in the water because you are declaring, I'm not giving part of myself to Jesus. I'm not giving my head, my mind, or my heart, or, or, or my hands. I'm giving absolutely everything to Jesus. All of the above. My heart, my mind, my strength, absolutely everything. A lot of people in Jesus' day wanted to follow him, but not everyone was willing to take what it cost to follow Jesus. Not everyone was willing. And if you look at Luke chapter 9 very quickly with me, Luke 9 verse 57, look what it says. Now it happened as they journeyed on the road that someone said to him, Lord, I will follow you wherever you go. What a profession of faith. Amen. Lord, I will follow you wherever you go. In Matthew chapter 8, the Bible says that that was a scribe that came after Jesus. I will follow you wherever you go. In fact, that's what we hope everybody in the world says one day, right? And we know not everyone will, but it's our desire that family members, friends, neighbors will all say, I want to follow Jesus wherever he leads, wherever he goes. But the real question that has to be be asked of that man who was willing to profess his desire to follow Jesus was, did he really want to follow him wherever he goes? You see, when you say you follow Jesus, that means you're going somewhere. Do you know where you're going? Do you know what he's called you to do? Are you doing what he's called you to do? It's one thing to say, I'm following. It's another thing to be doing what you say. Are you following me? Luke chapter 9, verse 58. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to what? Nowhere to lay his head. And this becomes important because as he looks at that man who says, I want to follow you wherever you go. This was a scribe, maybe a Pharisee. I don't know. It could have been a Sadducee. But this is a religious leader. This is someone who goes to church. But guess what? Back in those days, for a religious leader, life was pretty good. You had a nice house over your head. You had lived conveniently. You probably had the best horse or the best car. You had nice clothes. You had a good job. You had the respect of the community. So when he saw Jesus and said, I want to follow you wherever you go, Jesus paused and said, yeah, are you sure you want to go where I'm going? Because where I go, I don't even know where I'm going to sleep from day to day. I don't have a house to lay my head. I don't have a place that I call home. Christ's itinerant ministry 
meant that he traveled everywhere with the purpose of finding people who desired the salvation he had to offer. And so for the man to say, I want to follow you wherever you go, are you willing to truly go where he goes? Because the truth is, it may not be convenient to follow Jesus. It may not be politically correct to follow Jesus. It may not be what the majority are doing when it comes to following Jesus, even the majority in the church. Because that scribe was surely part of the majority. I will follow you wherever you go. You realize if you follow me, what you would have to be willing to give up. Because here I am, the master of the universe, and I don't even have a place to lay my head. Then was another one who came to him and said in verse 59, follow, Jesus, in fact, says to him, another person, Luke 9, 59, follow me. But he said, Lord, let me first go and bury my dead. Jesus said to him, let the dead bury their own dead, but you go and preach the kingdom of God. And I sit there and I go, look, in Matthew 8, it, the man wants to follow him as well. And, 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 and Jesus says, I want you to follow me. Here's what you got to understand. Jesus wants you to follow him. It's why the Bible says many are called, but look at the next phase. Many are called, but few are chosen. Are you listening? Many are called, but few are chosen. And so the question we have to ask ourselves is not so much if you're called. I would say you are if you're here. The real question is, are you chosen? Jesus looks at the man who looks at him and says, I want to follow you, but let me go first and bury my father. To us in the 21st century context, we would look at that and say, well, that seems reasonable. His daddy just died. He wants to go bury his daddy. No, 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 that's not what it meant in the context of what he was talking. Back in those days, to say, I want to go bury my father was to say, let me go back and live with my father until he dies. Let me go home and live at home until he dies. And let me bury him and then I'll come and follow you. Are you really willing to follow Jesus wherever he goes? Or are there excuses in your way for why you can't do it? I'm too busy. I've got a lot to do. I, I, it's so much. I got to travel a long way. I got to do. I got to do. I got to do. Jesus says you either follow him or you don't. Simple. No excuses. There is not room for disciples who want to halfway follow Jesus. Want to know how I know that? Look what Luke chapter 9 verse 61 says. And another also said, Lord, I will follow you, but let me first go home and bid them farewell who are at my house. And Jesus said to him, no one having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of heaven. You know what God says? You're going to work for me, then focus on working for me, period. No one puts their hand to a plow and then starts talking about all the reasons they can't plow. In fact, that's why we get the parable of the marriage feast. You remember? When the man goes out, starts a feast, and he calls in all the people to come into the feast. And what does one say? I'm sorry, I just bought a brand new John Deere. I got to go try her out. Another one says, I just got married. I got to spend time with my wife. Now somebody else says, well, you know what? I, I, I just bought a parcel of land. I got to go deal with that. And you know what the king of, the, of, of, that, of that kingdom does? He goes and finds somebody else. Because you're either all in or you're not. Deuteronomy 6.4 says, 6.4 and 5. We've done 6.4. 6.5 says these words. Love the Lord your God with all your heart all your soul and all your might. 
your strength. You understand? Everything you've got. There are no room for excuses for someone who wants to follow Jesus. None whatsoever. You're either all in or you're out. One or the other. And so, today in the light of this baptism, I want to ask you the question, how in have you been? Have you been all in or do you just put a toe in from time to time? Or do you put a foot in from time to time? Or do you put a leg in whenever it's convenient to do it? Or you may even put in most of your body for five seconds and then feel good about it later. You're either all in or you're out. You either love him with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind, or you don't love him at all. Period. And so today, that's all I want to challenge you with today. You're here in this place saying to the world. Now, there may be some, and I've addressed you many times before. There may be some here who aren't still sure if you want to follow Jesus. I'm going to tell you, I acknowledge that honesty, and so does God. And he's still working on you. But for those of you who are here, that have said to yourself, I want to follow Jesus. Lord, I will follow you wherever you go. Are you really doing that? Or are you like those men who always had something to look back at? When called out of Sodom and Gomorrah, Lot and his wife and his children were told, leave this city and don't look back. As they ran out, having seen what the angels had done on their behalf, having blinded the wicked men of Sodom who desired to do wicked things to their visitors that had arrived, the angels of God. You know the story. As they're walking out of the city of Sodom and Gomorrah, they warned them, don't look back. You got to understand something. When God comes in to save you, the Bible says you become a new creation. All things have passed away. All things are new. Stop looking back. Stop looking back. Back only creates excuses. Back only creates attitudes of complacency. Back does not allow you to grow. You can't move forward looking back. It cannot happen. The past is the past. Jesus wants to put it behind you. Put it behind you yourself as well. Move forward in the name of Jesus. And you know the story. Lot and his children, they moved forward, but his wife chose to look back. And in a moment, in an instant, she turned into a pillar of salt the concept that you can either choose to follow all the way or you don't follow at all at all do you really want to follow Jesus wherever he goes do you really if that's the case My challenge to you today is, together, you and me, let's quit making excuses and let's start moving forward because he's coming. He is coming. He is coming. And this world will be destroyed and everything you love could be destroyed with it. Choose this day who you will serve. Choose whether the gods and people of the world and of your fathers or the God who has saved you. Choose this day whom you will serve. As for me and my house, I've already made my choice. God bless you.